I want everyone at home to understand that uh, anytime I come to Finland, I feel like I'm home. How many times have you been in Finland before? This is, a, this is the fifth time to be in this country. And it, it's, what's so amazing is the moment we arrive in Helsinki and then, then, then fly into the interior, uh, and I look around the plane, I look around, and it's like I'm looking at relatives <laughs> and, and, you know, family members. Yeah. And so it's great to be here. And I'm sure you know that the Finns love you and your ministry. Well, I love the Finns. Yeah. But Steve, uh, <clears throat> sometimes people are, they, they hunger, they are hungry for the Lord. And they would love to be uh, and have a living, alive connection with the Lord, to have a living relationship with Him. But they just don't know how. And uh, they have heard the stories how people get saved and that helps them. Mm -hmm. So would you please tell us a little bit more what happened and, and how did you actually uh, practically, what happened? How did you feel and, and, and what was going on when you really met with the Lord Jesus? Well, for, first of all, I didn't want anything to do with God, okay? And there's there's people that watch this broadcast. Uh -huh. And that's what this, this program's all about, is, is how to find the Lord. And once you have found the Lord, to be encouraged in God. And uh, I didn't want anything to do with God. And there's there's billions of people on this earth that don't want anything to do with God. They're just not interested. Mm -hmm. They're living their own lives. And that's what I was doing. I was living my own life. And uh, I eventually got under drugs and alcohol. And it doesn't that doesn't have to be your problem. It can be it can be money. It can be education. Sure. Whatever becomes your God. And and so drugs and alcohol were my God. And I'm going to show a, a picture uh, that this is a picture of me. Uh, when I was a drug addict. And um, you may say, well, that's not a very clear picture. And I say, well, it's not because the police took it <laughs> and they were not professional photographers. They were just taking a picture of a young man who was a drug addict and uh, it shows desperation. And I look into these eyes, even though they're blurry, I see a very lost man. Correct. Uh, I had been arrested 13 times for drug addiction, drug sales, uh, problems, uh, that's connected with uh, the selling of drugs. And, um, but I had a mom that I just, you know, got finished sharing with you about who was praying. And I'm, and those of you at home, moms that are watching this, don't ever stop praying for your family members. If I could encourage you to just keep hold on to God, because my mama would pray and she would pray. And the more she prayed, the worse I got. Hmm. But finally, in October of 1975, in desperation, I had, I had been a drug addict for something like 10 years, and in desperation, she called a Lutheran minister. And this young Lutheran minister was on fire for God. He loved the Lord. He had had a personal encounter with God. Uh -huh. He came over to my house, and uh, in a matter of a couple minutes, he shared with me, he said, he said, Steve, Jesus loves you and has a plan for your life. And uh, John, I was going through convulsions. I was, oh, I was in the most miserable state. And, I, and I, I'd been crying and, and I laid there on my bed and he said, Jesus loves you and has a plan for your life. And I looked up at him and I said, I don't believe in God. And he, he said, that's okay. Hmm. He's still real and he's in this room. And he said, pray with me. And I said, I don't know how to pray. He said, that's okay. Just call out to the name Jesus. And I want you to take my hand like this. This is exactly what he did. He took my hand and I remember lying on my bed, looking up at the ceiling and I began to say, Jesus. He just said, say Jesus, yeah. Jesus, Jesus. And as I began to say his name, the power of God came into that room. And in 30 seconds, John, I was transformed. It was as if I had never done any drugs in my life. And that was the beginning of the greatest, I mean, the, the rest of my life. For 30 years, I've lived for God now. So it's the name, it's the power of the name of Jesus. The power of the name. And many people said, well, I just need to go to church. Uh -huh. I need to be in the choir. I need to take communion. I, no, those are all wonderful things. And I don't say don't do those. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. But what good is it if you're sitting in a, in a choir in a church, but you don't know Jesus. Absolutely. And you know, another thing you can, uh, what's the national chain here? Is it Hesburger? Is it, uh -huh. Okay. You can walk into a Hesburger. It doesn't make you a hamburger. Absolutely okay. Not. Yeah. And walking into a church doesn't make you a Christian. Correct. And so you got to have your heart changed. So basically, you know, people are sometimes they are thinking about prayer and, uh, and they think about something great mystery, which is, of course it is. But then again, it's very simple. One name. Yeah. And it's prayer is conversation with God. Yeah. And you, and, and you cry out to one name. Yeah. But you know what we do? 
we, we, we want to pray eloquent prayers. Uh. Oh, most heavenly, gracious Father that dwelleth in the heavenlies. We want to pray these. We want to impress God. There's no way anyone can impress God. He created the universe. Absolutely. He saw us when we were in diapers. Yeah. How are we going to impress him? Mm -hmm. Okay. All you do is say, Jesus, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Wash me of my sin. Make me brand new. And he comes in. And we just had the, the picture on. Hey. What, what look at this great change with that name before <laughs> after I hope before after I hope you can see the change it's obvious yeah the, the, and that's just being honest with God yeah and uh, and and Steve after you got saved now quite quickly you went into the full-time ministry yeah now, now please tell us some some of what happened because people many times they there are people who say that okay I might re even receive Jesus but I have strong doubts if I can walk with right. him a holy life. So what happened in Well, Poland? what I did is uh, I immediately got involved with strong Christians. Now, God opened up a door for me to go to a place called Teen Challenge, which was a drug rehab program for Christians. Uh, and that was, an, that was an incredible opportunity. But you don't even have to do that. If you get involved in a strong church where people love the Lord, you know, if you hang around Christians, mm -hmm. hang around godly people, you're going to become like the people you hang around. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I began doing. And early on, John, I began to develop a burden, a real burden in my heart for people because I was happy. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. And my own family, I have brothers and sisters who were not Christians. And, and before, when I was a drug addict, they always felt sorry for me, you know, that Steve, he's just, a, he's just an alcoholic, he's just a drug addict. I was always cussing and, and you know, just abusing my life. And then I became a Christian. And um, rather than them being happy about that, it made them mad. Because Your own family members. My own family, not my mom, yeah, yeah. but my, 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 brothers and, uh, my brother and sisters, because I became holy. Uh-huh. You know, mm -hmm. and, and my, my sister would say, do you want a beer? And I go, no, thanks. How about a glass of wine? No, thanks. How about a mixed drink? No, thanks. And then I'd go, I'd say things like, praise the Lord. <laughs> and one day I'll never forget. She came up to me and she goes, she, and I'd said something like, uh, thank you, Jesus, or praise the Lord. She goes, don't you ever use that language in my house. <laughs> And I had been cussing. Yeah, and that now, was nothing. But now, now I'm a Christian. She goes, don't you ever use that language. And I said, Marsha, what's wrong? And eventually she came to the Lord and got on fire yeah. for God. So. so even though you, 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 after your commitment to the Lord Jesus, you met some opposition. Like oh, I, many people, oh, many Christians, they should not be surprised. But that's not the end of the story. No. Of course not. Oh, come on. I mean, the, my old friends, they didn't come up to me and go, Hey, glory to God. You know, they would, they would look at one of my best friends right after I became a Christian. He pulled up to my house. I had been a Christian one hour. He pulled up in front of my house and he had a bag of marijuana. I'll never forget this. It was the best marijuana you could buy. It was called Colombian gold. And it, it was a beautiful day in Northern Alabama. The sun was shining. And the sun was shining on that marijuana. And the, it it's actually have, has gold in glittering. it. It's glittering. It's just, it was beautiful marijuana. And he waved it in my face. And he goes, you want to go get stoned? Hmm. And I went, no. I said, I don't want to do that. He goes, what? And I said, I don't want to get stoned. And I said, a few minutes ago, Jesus Christ changed my life. And if I smoke that pot with you, Whatever I'm feeling will go away. Yeah. And he cussed at me. Got your in best, his car. One of your best friends. And drove off. And so I got a brand new set of friends. So what happened? Now, now you were surrounding yourself with the Christians. How did you know that you are being called by God to full-time ministry? And how did the Lord impress you? You said that you had the burden for the people. I couldn't get away from it. All I thought about was helping people. That's, and that's really part of the, the proof of a call to the ministry. Is that, you know, when... you. You just want to help people. Uh -huh. And, and uh, you know, a pastor, if there's a pastor watching, a pastor who doesn't care about people should never be pastoring. Uh, correct. You know, and a young person that wants to be in the youth ministry, if you don't love young people, mm -hmm. then don't go into the youth yeah. ministry. And so you got to be saved 
and then you got to have a burden for people. Okay, what, what were the first steps? Now, you had gotten saved, you had met some opposition, you had the burden from, from the Lord to help people, and you were growing in, in spiritually in your life. Bible school. Bible school. Oh, I had to go to Bible school because mm -hmm. I didn't know the Word. I had to learn the Word and not only learn it for myself, I had to learn how to apply it. I needed to learn how to teach it. I needed to learn how to, when I, when I walk up to someone on the street, what do I say to them? How do I say to them? Uh, that Jesus loves him. How can I prove in Scripture uh, who he is and what he's done? And so I needed to go to Bible school. So after the Bible school, did you go uh, to the traveling ministry? Or were you... No, I began working in churches, just mm -hmm. doing anything. One of the first things I did in the ministry was scrub a floor. And uh, I'll never forget scrubbing this floor. And I, and I had this little steel wool, okay? It's just a little pad. And I was scrubbing this floor. It was tiled, just like the floor in here going round and around, getting every scuff mark off from the shoes. Sure. And uh, this pastor walks by and he looks down at me and he goes, hey, you. And I looked up at him, he goes, you missed a spot. Is that, that's. <laughs> I kid you. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so I went. <laughs> and the Lord, so was, the Lord was really dealing oh, with yeah. you. Uh, because there was a time in my life I'd have gotten up and I'd say, what'd you say? Yeah. You so get, it, was a, it, it was a change of character that it had a, happened. It had to happen. Yeah. Because if you're going to be in the ministry, not everyone's going to come up to you and love you. Okay, some people are going to abuse you. And so uh, I started working in churches, and then I started uh, traveling. I took a, uh, a group of young people to Mexico, mm -hmm. and that's when God called me. And uh, I had met my wife in Bible school, and um, uh, we had worked in this church, went to Mexico, and in Mexico we felt a burden for the rest of the world, came back, resigned the church, and then spent the next 10 years uh, working all over the world. Uh, you've been a missionary to Argentina. That Argentina, Spain, uh, Russia. We planted a drug rehab program in Belarus, mm -hmm. uh, helped plant a church in Baranovice in Belarus. Uh, we've worked in Colombia uh, in uh, 41 nations. I know that you are fluent in Spanish, and just to refresh the, the viewers, just say something in Spanish, just the Lord loves you or whatever. Dios tiene un plan para tu vida. Él vino para salvarte, para sanarte y liberarte. Jesus Christ came to save you, to heal you, to deliver you. He loves you. It's a beautiful language, by the way. It is. A, it's a language of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> is it? <laughs> you know, I thought well, it's been. <laughs> well, you know. Well, anyways, so you've been part of, in different parts of the world, mm -hmm. uh, planting churches, mm -hmm. uh, helping to build uh, the local churches. Mm -hmm. uh, but Steve, in the Christian world, you are very well known throughout the whole world for something that happened during the 90s in Pensacola, mm -hmm. Florida. What was that? Well, I was uh, visiting a church in uh, the, the panhandle of, Pensac of Florida, which is the northwestern part. And uh, I was supposed to be at this church for two hours. Uh, it was a fairly large church, a couple thousand members, beautiful sanctuary. And uh, I was raising money for our work in, in Russia. And so I was what we call itinerating, mm -hmm. raising money. And uh, I went and preached in that church and I opened up the altars for everyone who wanted special prayer. And from 500 to 1,000 people came forward and I began to lay hands on them, pray for them, and the power of God came down. And um, I ended up staying there for five years. And what, what were the years? Things drive a wedge between us and God. Mm -hmm. But I'm finding something to be true today greater than the last 30 years in the ministry is that people are saying, you know what? Yes, I need a house. Yes, I need a car. I need a wife. I need family. I need these things. But more than anything else, I need Jesus. And so you've got to, first of all, understand that you've got to get close to God. You need Jesus Christ in your life. Jesus Christ came to forgive you your sin. The only way to be saved and to get to heaven is to ask Jesus Christ to forgive you. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. The Bible also says that if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So right now, all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he lived. Remember, 2,000 years ago, he shed his blood for you, died a horrific death so you might have life, and he rose again from the dead. Now it's all, the ball is in our court. Now it's up to us. We're the ones that have to come to God. You know, someone said to me the other day, John, they said, if God loves me, he would come to me. 
Mm. And I said to him, he's already come. Yeah, absolutely. 2,000 years ago he came. Now it's your turn to come to him. And so what I want to do with you right now, if you want Jesus Christ to forgive you and to wash you clean, I want you to pray this prayer with me. You're going to ask Jesus Christ to forgive you, to make you brand new. And I want you to pray it where you're at right now in your room out loud. Dear Jesus, and could we pray in Finnish and English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dear Jesus, Rakas Jesus, I ask you now mä sinua nyt to forgive me. Anna anteeksi. I have sinned. Olen tehnyt syntiä. I'm sorry. Olen pahoillani. Wash me, Jesus. Pese minut, Jesus. I repent. Teen parannuksen. Jesus, Jesus, be my savior. Ole pelastajani. My Lord, Herrani. And my very best ja friend. Paras in your precious name. In Jesus' name. Jeesuksen nimessä. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. Absolutely. It was such a pleasure to It's have you in pleasure. the Alive Connection program. Thank you so much. God bless you.